Hi everybody, my name's Sarah and I run a shop called Shop Zero in the city centre of Nottingham, about two minutes from Market Square on St James's Street. And I'm here today to give you your challenge for the 28 day challenge to be more carbon neutral. So this is really important that we all join in and do this because as a city, we're all gonna have to work together if we want to reduce our carbon footprint. So first of all, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about me and my shop and then I'm going to set your challenge and in between we're going to play a little game. Mm, it's going to be fun. So basically, um, my shop. So I stock things in bulk like food and detergents and you can bring your own containers. So it helps people reduce their waste. So you don't have to throw any packaging away. You can bring it and you can refill it. So people bring it for their pasta and their rice and things like that. They get in their washing up bottles or their shampoo bottles and we can refill them and then they can get used again and again and again. Because often there's so much life left in them. And I also have eco-friendly things like deodorants and um, shampoo bars and bamboo toothbrushes and things that substitutes for plastic sponges. So my shop, a big part of it is helping people reduce their plastic footprint. And your challenge today is going to be about this. But why should we be reducing our plastic? And how does that link to being carbon neutral? I bet some of you might know this already, but you might know that plastic is actually made from oil and oil comes from the ground. And oil is causing all these problems that we're having with climate change. And also the plastic in our environment is, is polluting. It's affecting marine life. It's getting into our water. It could be getting into things that we eat through the food chain. And it could also even be in our air as microplastics, very, very small bits of plastic that we can't actually see. So it's important where we can to try and reduce plastic. And it's got to keep that oil in the ground, keep it in the ground, find alternatives, reuse the things we have. Because plastic isn't ever going to go away. It's not something that can biodegrade. So in nature, you can imagine like a little cycle that goes around like this. So things are born and then they kind of die and then they biodegrade and they go back to the earth. Plastic doesn't do that. So for every bit of plastic that's ever been made in this world, it's still here on our planet. And I've heard that for all 6.8 billion people living on this planet, it's a big number, there is one tonne of plastic on the earth for all of us. Now I know, I've read that a hippo weighs one tonne. Now I've never actually seen a hippo but I've read about them and I've heard about them. I've seen pictures of them and they are really big. They're probably about eight feet long. So that's taller than the tallest person and they're really wide and they weigh one tonne. And for each one of us there's that much plastic on the earth and it's not going to go away. So it's really important we stop now the best we can um, and not use it. And there are often things that we might use for a few minutes that are made of plastic and then we just we just throw them away. And do we really know where they go? Even if we put them in recycling, are we really sure they're recycled? I think only 9% of plastic actually gets recycled. So your challenge is around plastic. But before we, I tell you the challenge, but what we do is play a little game. So I've got my bag here. Here's my bag look. And we're gonna play the game called plastic, not plastic. Oh, not plastic. So we're gonna put the not plastic sign down here. I'm gonna put the plastic one here. And I've got a few things in my bag. I'm going to get them out and then we're going to work together. I'm going to figure out which ones are plastic and which ones are not plastic. Because you might need to know some of this when you come to do the challenge. So here we go. Oh, I'm going to start with an easy one. Well, we, this one is actually called a plastic bottle. So I think we're going to put that on the plastic pile. So basically, things like this. So imagine, this is one of those single-use plastics. It means you only use it once. And you just use it for a very short time. So literally, you could go to the shop, buy your water, drink your water. And in two minutes, you could be getting rid of this water bottle and just think it's got so much use left in it but why not swap it why not have a reusable water bottle that's something you could do so let's look see what else is in here oh i've got see this one that is a paper bag hmm is that plastic or is that not plastic what do we think i think you're right that isn't made of plastic no it's actually made from plants and that's great because that will go back to the earth, that will biodegrade. And also, rather, because it takes quite a lot of energy, so carbon, etc., to grow it and also to make it. So what we can do is we can reuse it as many times as we can because it can be reused. And then, if it could be recycled, it can be. If it gets a bit mucky and a bit dirty and we can't go in the recycling, then we can put it in our compost bins at home. So that's not plastic. What else is in here? 
Oh, this one. What's this one? Oh, it's a straw, isn't it? And yeah, this one. Now this is an interesting one because it is made of plastic, but it's made of plant plastic. And so I got this in a bar, I think, in town, and somebody told me when I got it that, oh, it's actually compostable. So when things are composted, they do that thing, that cycling thing, and they go back to nature. But unfortunately, even though this is made of plant-based plastic, so it wasn't made from carbon oil out the ground. So that is a, a little bit of a good thing. Um, it's actually only industrially compostable. That means it needs a really, really high temperature to break it down. And there aren't many places, there's not anywhere in Nottingham that can do that. So this just becomes like a single use item again. So there's something else in my bag. So first of all, I'm gonna put that, I have to put that with the plastic. Single use, that one. I've got something else in my bag as well. Let me have a little search around in here. So why not swap it for something like this? So this one is made of metal, it's a metal straw. And this can be reused again and again and again and again. So if you really want a straw, because some people might not even need one, why not go for one of these metal ones? So that one I'm going to put on the not plastic pile. What else have we got in here? Oh, oh, oh look, I've got Lucky Duck. Lucky Duck's in here. So Lucky Duck is a little cuddly toy. And um, what do you think Lucky Duck is? Do you think Lucky Duck's made of plastic or not? Mm. What do you reckon, Lucky? Lucky Duck just told me that actually she is made of plastic. She has to go in the plastic pile. So some of your toys could be made of plastic. You never would have guessed it, would you? But do remember, at least Lucky Duck is not single use. But it's just worth thinking about when you're buying new things. Hmm. Anyway, what else is in here? So, oh, this one's an interesting one. Now, I couldn't, this is glittery. Can you see it? It's a bit sparkly glittery. It's got glitter on it. What do you reckon? Do you think glitter is made of plastic or not? What do you reckon? Mm, yeah, it is actually made of plastic. It has to go on the plastic pile. So, I mean, glitter's great fun, and it's great fun when we're doing it for crafting and things, but, again, it won't biodegrade. But if you look carefully and look around, you can get biodegradable glitter, which will break down and won't stay in our environment, which is great. So that's a good choice we can make. Anything else in here? Oh! I've got a little fleecy blanket in here. What do you reckon about this one? Do you think this would be plastic, not plastic? What do you reckon? Mm. Well, actually, this is actually also made of plastic. So it's a bit similar to Lucky Duck in that it's been made from fibres that are, are from, from plastic and then they're woven. And the thing is, sometimes with fleecy things, is that they actually re release microfibres that can get into our water. So that's just again something to think about again because often all fabrics release fibres in our washing. Then if they're older, then less so. So sometimes if you buy second-hand clothes, they've got less fibres coming off them. So that can be a positive thing as well, of course, as buying second-hand because that means we're not having all the new resources to make those things. They're, they're having new life because they're coming to a new person to wear them. But yes, yeah, so that's something that's worth thinking about as well. So you can get things called guppy bags, like a special bag that you can put your things into so the fibres don't get into the wash. But yeah, something else to bear in mind. And I'm gonna put that on the plastic pile here. And then, what else have I got in here? Oh, oh this is an interesting one. Well, wow, what's this here? So that is some chewing gum. What do you reckon? Is chewing gum plastic or not plastic? What do we think? Mm. Actually, chewing gum is plastic. It has to go on the plastic pile. And when you think about it and you look down the pavement and you see all those blobs of chewing gum that are there, they are never not going away. And that's why there are so many of them around. They just won't rot away. So that's something to think about when you're getting your chewing gum. It's actually made of plastic and there are substitutes for chewing gum as well that are biodegradable. So yeah, put that on the plastic pile. One last thing here. One of these cups, disposable cups. And um, often we are told that these are recyclable, but this one I think is made from, again, the plant plastic. But even though we might feel a little bit better when we get it, this again, if we haven't got any industrial composting, then it's not going to biodegrade. It's just basically going to be around forever unless we find a way of, of um, industrially composting it. So I'm afraid that has to go on the plastic pile as well, and it's single use. Also, this cup here. This, um, I think some companies say, yeah, it's compostable, it's recyclable. Unfortunately, it's really, really hard to recycle because there's a layer of plastic inside it and it could be plant plastic. But again, um, 
only if we can get it to industrial composting or get it to a recycling scheme. So again, it becomes single use. So another substitute you can make, a sustainable swap, is to get your own reusable cup and take that out when you go out with you. So maybe any grown-ups out there are watching, that's something you could think about doing. So I'll put that on the pile. So we've played our game. We've found out that there are actually lots of plastics in our world that perhaps we don't realise and we perhaps don't know what happens to them. So that's just to kind of get us all thinking. Um, and there are substitutes. I, mean, I should have brought that. I should have brought my reusable cup, shouldn't I, as well, and my bottle to show you. But I know you know what they look like, really. So on to your challenge. So your challenge today, and it's quite a hard one, is to see if you can avoid all single-use plastic for a day. So that could be things like coffee cups, water bottles. It could be packaging from food. So maybe you might need to visit your greengrocers if you've got one near you. Maybe have a little think about it. Just see if you can do it. And you might find this quite hard. And don't worry if you do, because it is a hard, hard thing to do. But give it a go and let me know how you get on. I really want to hear. So I've just got this here, some information. Look. So here's some hashtags you can use. So that hashtag 2828, hashtag 28 day challenge, hashtag carbon neutral. I can't see that phrase. Carbon neutral 2028. And then look, let me know at Shop Zero, Nottingham, N O T T M, because it was a bit too long otherwise on Twitter. Um, and you can find me on Instagram and on Facebook as well. Or look, this is what we need to follow everybody carbon neutral. So CN 2028. Let us know how you get on with trying to reduce single use plastic packaging, plastic packaging for one day. Thank you, everybody. I'm just going to come and turn.